Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm so glad it worked this time. Yeah, me too. Yeah, um, I hope it continues to work. Should I not have said anything? Am I jinxing <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, you're maybe jinxing it. Whether okay. it's my end or your end. But yeah, okay. thanks again. Thanks for I'll, I'll for stop talking about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, thanks so much for coming on and talking about Long Bright River. Um, I'm so glad we got to do a podcast and it will be coming soon on Moms Don't Time to Read Books. But um, for people who don't know you, this uh, can you give like a, a, a the two sentence synopsis of, of what the book is about, but also really what drew you to this topic and what about what what from inside you made you want to write about this? Sure. Um, Long Bright River is set in Kensington, which is a neighborhood in Philadelphia, which has been particularly hard hit by the opioid crisis. And it's the story of two sisters, um, one of whom is addicted to heroin and opioids um, and doing sex work to fund her addiction. And the other of whom, uh, Mickey, is um, a police officer. And when Casey, the younger, goes missing, Mickey kind of takes it upon herself to go searching for her on the job and also off the job. So it certainly has elements of a thriller um, or a crime drama, but it's also been described a lot as a family drama or literary suspense or whatever term you feel like calling it. Um, and I guess um, there were two major sources of inspiration for the book. Um, one is my own family's um, multi-generational history of addiction. Um, like many families I know, um, we have that going on. Um, and the other is I live in Philadelphia. Um, I first was uh, invited to go to Kensington as part of a photojournalism project, um, which was pretty short-lived, but I kept going back um, to write more nonfiction about it and also to do some volunteer work with various organizations in the uh, neighborhood, including um, St. Francis Inn, which has a women's day shelter where I ran free writing workshops for their clients. Um, so those are those are sort of the major sources of inspiration for the book. Wow. And how, so this book, you've written, this is not your first book by any stretch, right. but um, you mentioned that it takes you about four to five years <laughs> per book. Um, so tell me just a little more about the process of writing this and, um, and your unique approach to, to writing fiction. Yeah, um, I'm a very slow writer. Um, more so than ever now that I've been in quarantine for going on three months with two little kids who are under four. Um, even under normal circumstances, I never work from an outline. And that means that everything I, every event that happens in a book, I discover in a pretty natural way, which means a, lo a long way. Like it takes me a very long time to come up with what just what the characters are going to do next. And, and I, I often unsuccessfully move the characters in a direction that I know isn't right for them. So I sort of pull them back. So yeah, I'm a slow writer, but I don't, you know, I don't necessarily have an issue with that. I, I don't feel compelled to speed up my writing process. So I'll probably just kind of keep doing what I'm doing. I mean, when you think about it, like, you could you could calculate average lifespan and think about how many books you're going to produce that's in the true next, like 20 years i mean that's it, a better way to right? think of it yeah. yeah i mean you'll have if you write five more bestsellers in the next 20 years that's pretty amazing i know that would be a nice thing to have happen right? <laughs> i don't know if it will but yeah I just, I, there's worse things than i mean yeah slow slow can mean thoughtful and uh yeah you know. no that's true for sure um, yeah, but yeah, I, did you happen to read Jennifer Senior wrote this essay, this op-ed in the New York Times this Sunday? Did you read it about no. parents during COVID? I have to get mm -hmm. her on this Instagram live because she yeah. broke down what's like basically going on between like, not that you and I have the similar, but just as yeah. fellow parents and trying sure. to work and get anything done in this pandemic. Sure. Um, she basically said there are three things that, um, and not to take up your interview with, with her point, but I think, it's, I think it's helpful. Um, one is that we're all um, acting all of a sudden like we're 1950s moms, right? right? We had it with all the housework and, and yeah. the childcare. Mm -hmm. um, and yet we have, you know, 2020 jobs and all the rest of it. That, that haven't let up um, Two, which like, speaks to your writing point. It's impossible to get to that state of flow where you can actually right. be creative and think through because you're constantly being interrupted. And yes. then it's the fact that you're doing all these things at the same time. And I'm not paraphrasing this perfectly, but like we have all of the different things at the same time, the job yeah. and mm -hmm. um, the 1950s and um, mm -hmm. 
you know, all the rest of it. And also this like hyper parenting focus that is so classic yeah. for, for our generation of moms, right? Where you right, have to right. Like the guilt. focus in and have like great yeah. parenting time and like whatever. Yeah. Um, so just, it's like the perfect storm of making us all feel terrible. So I, that's pretty much how I felt for the past three months almost. Yeah. It's tough. That, that actually comes up a lot in the, in Long Bright River, there's this con the 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 narrator, the protagonist, is a single mom um, with a very busy job as a police officer, and she's constantly um, having difficulty finding reliable childcare. So life imitates art. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I can't. I have I have no childcare in this moment. Um, then again, I have many privileges that that uh, Mickey doesn't. So I'm constantly like count your blessings, count your blessings, count your blessings. I tell my kids that too, and now I'm like tell yourself that whatever yeah. um but yeah it's tough no, no I, playgrounds I feel that's like, a big I, part of it i'm like we i miss playgrounds more than i thought i could ever miss playgrounds yeah i miss lots of things that i didn't yeah. think i could miss i actually yeah. i finally made myself go on a run this morning and i was listening yeah. to the trolls War world tour yeah. <laughs> soundtrack yeah. because that was the only thing that was like downloaded mm -hmm. recently um yeah and uh um, I don't even know why I'm even talking about this. Um, yeah. There was a point, there was a point to talking about, oh, because they were talking about dancing. And I was like, wow, I even miss dancing, like on a crowded yeah. dance floor, which by the way, I would yeah. normally hate, right? I hate right. being like, but like now that I can't do it, I miss it. So yeah, anyway. yeah. Well, maybe we'll all be very, very appreciative of, of small things as they, as they reenter our lives That's for, true. in the short term anyway. I don't know. But, but I did empathize in, in at least that one piece with, with Mickey and the babysitter who she had, mm -hmm. not that, I mean, I love my babysitters, but um, that the babysitter she had, she felt like was like a total waste, but she didn't know mm -hmm. what to do about it. And she's like, this babysitter is late all the time. And yeah. um, my son is just like staring through the window at me, waiting for me to come home. Yeah. And I feel so terrible, but for a lot of reasons mm -hmm. that come up in the book, he couldn't mm -hmm. go to his prior school. Mm -hmm. And he was just sort of like waiting until September mm -hmm. again, which mm -hmm. is also similar to like what everybody's mm -hmm. doing right now. I feel like it's the same. Yeah. Game, yeah. So. Yeah. Anyone who does shift work um, or whose shifts switch back and forth probably can empathize with the struggle of like just the, the, uh, the puzzle, the very complex puzzle of piecing together care for one's children, which Mickey's dealing with for sure. Yeah. And her schedule just constantly changing and being mm -hmm. so, you know, irregular. Mm -hmm. and, right. Um, all the rest of it. Right. Um, yes. Um, well, I, this book was so good and Thanks. I really appreciate you coming back on and putting yeah. up with me again. And, um, of course. um, it's so nice to be able to like, just get out of our own heads for a minute mm -hmm. and into mm -hmm. your story here. Um, especially knowing that you it came from a place of personal background too, that your mm -hmm. family has had to go through this. And so you, mm -hmm. it's not like you're a total outside. I mean, not that mm -hmm. it, it adds another piece of authenticity, I think, to the mm -hmm. story. Thank you. Though it's fiction. Thank you. So Thanks. Thanks worth. so much. Um, and yeah, thanks for having me on uh, in multiple ways. I guess I'll be back for, <laughs> for, for an, another thing as well, which is great. Oh, that's I'm right. Glad, we have our I'm book club coming talking. up. Yes. Yeah. Um, we have our book club coming up for anyone who's interested on June 9th. Um, yeah. That's right. You're not, you're, you're not done with me yet. So this is all going to be Lothar, back there. Uh, yeah. The Literary Festival has uh, set us up. So thank you yeah. uh, for that. Cool. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, Zibby. I really appreciate your time and your questions and reading the book. You too. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.